What's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of the 10-7 MMA Podcast. I'm DS, and today we have a huge card that we're breaking down for you. Major implications in the lightweight division, major implications for the UFC pound-for-pound pound title, uh, and just a huge card overall. I mean, we've really been looking forward to this one. And of course, as always, I'm here with my main man and my better half, Dino Bam Bam. Thank you, Dino. What's going on, guys? Thank you so much for tuning in again. Uh, if you can, as always, please like and subscribe. We'd really appreciate that. If you could follow us on Instagram at the number seven, or I'm sorry, the ten number seven MMA on Instagram. So the T E N number seven MMA on Instagram. We'd really appreciate that. Uh, I appreciate the please, love that we just, just do it. Yeah, right. Just follow. What, like, what does it? Not? What does it cost you? It doesn't cost you anything. Just do it. I appreciate the love that we have been getting. It's been cool. Uh, some of them are, are close friends, but I still like it. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. It's been fun. Uh, really quickly, you know, I want to recap. Last week, or yep. la- a couple days ago, actually, at this point, we had the uh, Derek lewis Sergey Spivak card. Mm-hmm. Kind of a, you know, whatever card. I didn't like the ending personally. Me neither. For me, it's just like, I'm a big fan of Derek Lewis, and that kind of hurt me to see it, and it seems like he's done. You know, what do you think about that? Yeah, I think when we talked about it last week at some point, I mentioned that, to me, he didn't look like he even wanted yeah. to be out there the last fight. Yeah. And, you know, but then you kind of convinced me, I feel I like. Cause I I, wanted, I I felt terrible about it. No, I mean, it's all good. I lost a bunch of money on it, but it's Same. fine. Same. Always. <laughs> by the way. Always with Derek Lewis. Right. But, well... I've made a lot of money on Derek Lewis, too. But, yes, yeah. you know, I think it's one of those where it's a guy, like, you know, we, we've talked about it. And I think at the end of the day, unfortunately, it's sad to say, but Daniel Cormier was right. Uh, and I don't think he went out on a limb to say anything no, too yeah. crazy. You know, I don't think Derek Lewis is somebody who, you know, sits there and trains super hard. He did look really good. He looked lean. Yeah. You know, I just think that it was... Sergey Spivak is, is on his way up. He's hungry. You know, he, I mean, I just didn't think he would be that dominant that quick, fashion that dominant, and that yeah. quick, you know. Um, like, you kind of, the reason you convinced me, I think, is, you, you know, you broke it down. Like, this is a guy, this is the type of guy that Derek Lewis will knock out. And it yeah. is. It still and, is. And it should be, right? But I, I just think he's done, man. I yeah. think he's done. 37 years old, it's probably. 37 yeah. years old. And again, it's not like he's LeBron, right? Where he's, right. you know, sitting there taking great care of his body and, and, and doing all this extra stuff and. You know, there, there's just, I think he's done. Uh, the card overall, I thought, was predictably garbage, to be yeah, quite frank. Yeah, um, you know, it was cool to see the... the it started ro- kind of nice. I'm sorry to cut you off. It Not started so nice, and then, like, it got really bad towards yep. the end. But yeah. yeah, it was... Uh, and, you know, what's messed up, too, is, like, the audacity to make it at 9 p.m. start, right? And then, like, you have to sit there until 3 a.m., which we did. Okay. You know, we that's fine. No problem. We'll, we'll do it for you guys every time. Yep. But the audacity to put together a subpar product and then expect us to watch till 3 a.m. is kind of rude. You I know? mean, I think it was just like a one-time thing, like we said a bunch Why of times. Why was it like, that late? It was supposed to be in Seoul, Korea. Yeah, but It was I mean, supposed to be Zombie and Giga Chikadze, and then Zombie yeah. ended up pulling out. So, I mean, whatever. That was a one-time thing. Thankfully, you know, we don't have to do that anymore. Dana said he's not doing that again. Yeah. So that's good. As far as that card's concerned, though, and the way that we had predicted the fights, I think we did pretty damn well. We did. So, yeah, yeah, we did do really well as far as predictions go. Um, you know, it was cool to see some of the guys from the road to the UFC, yeah. you know, really get their chance. Laura Senko had her uh, debut as, as far as actually UFC yeah. announcing. I know she's she was solid. Done, she was, yeah, she was decent, yeah. you know. Some quirky things, but I mean, right. it, just like we're just starting out, you know, it's yeah. her first time. She looked nervous, though. I'm not going to lie. She looked like a little she did. bit nervous. She did. And like, there was a lot of times where like Bisping would be talking when they weren't on camera or whatever. Bisping sucks, too, I or, just want to uh, say, man. Yeah, I mean, he sucks. Whatever. But they were, I'm sorry, when they were on camera, there was times where she was like looking at Bisping while he was talking. Yeah. And then you just catch her eyes, like, drifting into yeah. the crowd. It's like you're in the apex. There's like seven people. Yeah. It's literally. okay. Like, yep. don't be nervous. Yep. But, you know, it is what it is. Good for her. Um, yeah, all in all, she did a great job. Yeah, for sure. And I just got to shout out my underdog pick of Adam Fugit. You did, man. So, you did pick that one. You know, I was I uh, when we talked about it last week. Yeah. You know, I, I know that I said that the odds seemed outrageous to me. Yeah. Um, and they yeah, were. He's, he's, yeah. They were, and he's an awkward kind of fighter. Yep. You know, good for him. Good for Adam. Fuck it. Um, <laughs> fuck it. He said fuck it, and he went out and did his thing, man. That's so what it yeah. Is. Anything else you want to cover about that card? Or should nope, I would love to leave that card far in the past yeah, and at forget this point about it. and never talk about it again. Down. Yep. Uh, real quick, I want to cover a little bit of news. Uh, since the last time you know we talked to you guys, the Conor McGregor and Michael Chandler Ultimate Fighter season has been confirmed, so it's the return 
of the notorious one mm -hmm. uh, versus Iron Michael Chandler. I saw somebody online dub it as Iron Michael Chandler versus Titanium Shimbone Conor McGregor. Okay. Uh, uh, what do you think about that? I'm down, dude. I can't wait for that. <laughs> I'm obviously down. I yeah. mean, what's what's there not to be down about? If you're a fight fan, if yep. you're a McGregor fan, if you're a Michael Chandler fan, you know, I know Mike Chandler has, has been, uh, he's he's been pulling for this, right? Oh, like, I mean, of course. he's literally been like saving himself for Conor McGregor, yeah. so to speak. Yeah, but, for sure. You know, um, I don't blame him. Is it actually is the like the ultimate fighter is going to happen? Obviously, yeah. Is the actual fight going to happen? Yeah, we'll Dana, see. Dana said it was. Uh, I know, I know. Dana says a lot of things, but yeah. you know, I just think that Connor is potentially on roids right now, and sure. he needs to be in the Uzada testing pool for six months. Right. He is not. He can is, make exceptions. He is still not though. Yeah. And if there's anybody to make an exception for, it's going to be Connor McGregor. Right. They did it for Lesnar. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, and, and again, another superstar. So I get all that, you know, and I'm excited about it. I'm excited to just see them trash talking. You know, they already started. Right. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about it, man. I, I think every 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 UFC fan is excited about it. For sure, and then, uh, and I agree. The next thing I wanted to mention was uh, Jorge Masvidal is putting on a boxing event, so it's going to be Game Bread Boxing. Uh, it's actually going to happen in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. It's about yep. like an hour and a little bit north of yep. here. There's no UFC that Saturday. I know we're trying to go to that. When is that? Uh, I think it's like May, for, April first, or May, I think it's April first. Might be an April Fool's joke. Is it at the end of this like like uh, stretch yeah, of UFC? I, I believe so. It's the I, first I week after. Yeah, I checked. Man, we we, no we got to go to that. Yeah, so yeah. we're we're gonna go. If anyone wants to go, hit us up. Obviously, we're probably trying to do that. Uh, only other thing I have is I guess there's the return of Kevin Lee. Supposedly, Kevin Lee's been re-signed to the UFC. Yep. Uh, I think he beat Diego Sanchez beat in, Diego in, Sanchez. in Habib's League, Eagle FC. Yep. And I guess he's Is that back. still going on? I mean, there was, like, money things going on. Of course, and like a, yeah. yeah I, who knows? But, yeah, I guess he's back. Where does Kevin Lee fit into all this? I guess we'll find out. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It's irrelevant. A anything else you want to cover as far as news is concerned? No, man. Let's, let's jump right into it. Let's do you it. know, as we said, Makashev, Volkanovski, it's a huge card. Yeah. Uh, maybe a little top heavy, in my opinion. You know, I, I know you said that you like the you, you like the prelims. Yeah. You know, the prelims aren't bad. Uh, I'm most excited about uh, obviously the co-main and the yeah. main event. Of course. Um, but let's get right into it, man. The yeah. first fight of the night, and I believe there's 12, 13 fights this this time. A lot. There's a lot of fights. Yeah. I have probably watched twenty four hours, like yeah. a full actual day's worth of film Same. leading up to this. I know you have too. Um, do with that information what you will. We're taking this very seriously. Yeah, so, we're trying. Um, first fight of the night, Zubaira Tukagov versus Elvis Brenner. Yeah. You want me to go first? Yeah, please. Take it away, my friend. All right. So first we have Elvis Brenner, newcomer to the UFC here. Shoot the box Diego Lima guy. Obviously trains with Charles Oliveira. Young guy taking this on pretty short notice. I believe this was supposed to be Joel Alvarez, who I know uh, you're not like the biggest fan. Or you like his fight I like, style, I like Joel Alvarez. But you think he's a weight bully. He, I mean, he's an obvious one. Yeah. He's six foot three at the weight class. I mean, what is this, featherweight? This is uh, this is 55. Yeah, lightweight. a lightweight. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, he's an obvious weight bully. Yeah. Six I mean, foot he, three, he, but... Obviously, yeah. I like Joel Alvarez a lot, though. I, I'll tell you, I would have much preferred to see that fight over yeah. this fight. But uh, I'll, I mean, I'll, let, I'll let you... Say sure. your piece first. So, uh, as far as Elvis Brenner is concerned, his record is mostly full of like some cans for what that's worth. L's to some pretty good guys, though. I know he had a decision loss to Gabriel Santos, who's an undefeated prospect in LFA. Um, his stand-up's pretty basic. It's not like fully developed yet, but on the ground, he's what you expect out of a shoot-to-box Diego Lima guy, right? He's very active on top and bottom, especially when he's in that guard. Top position and bottom position in the guard. Very active, fishes for the legs a lot. On the feet, he's a Muay Thai guy. He likes to look for that plum. He likes to go for the trip out of it. Every one of his 13 professional wins, Dino, is by submission. Yep. So, you know, tons of arm bars. That's kind of his thing. Uh, I wonder a little bit about his cardio. Mm -hmm. Seem, he seems to tire out a little bit as the fight progresses, which I guess is normal. But you don't like seeing that out of a guy making his UFC debut, especially being 25 years old. On the other side, uh, you have Zuba. Zuba uh, Tahugov. Is that how you say it? Yep. Tahugov. Yeah, first thing uh, with him, he hasn't fought since UFC 267, which was October of 2021. Mm -hmm. I just want you to, just a little side note here, that was four light heavyweight champions ago. That's crazy. As, uh, yeah, as I mean, crazy the division's in flux. Yeah. But, yeah. But anyways, quick. Although my boy, Jamal Hill, Sweet got James. it done, though. Yeah. And I just, I love that guy. I can't wait till your boy fights my boy. That's neither here nor there. I like but, Geary, too, but, yeah, but you know. I, that's going to be fun. 
But anyways, with uh, with Zuba, he's got quick hands. He's not like the most fundamental striker. He throws a little bit wide, but he's deceptively fast. Mm -hmm. that, that's what I noticed with him. Uh, we saw the hands on display against Ricardo Hamos. That was two grapplers, and they kind of canceled each other out. Ended up striking for three rounds. He looked faster than Hamos. He was reaching more consistently. Great, you know, great job counter striking in that fight. Um, the game in Brenner's guard is going to be interesting for me. If we do get to the ground, that's the interesting part of this fight. I want to see kind of how he's able to handle that. Cardio's no issue with Zuba, so that's a big edge, you know, for him yeah. as well. That being said, I think it's too much too soon for Elvis here, unfortunately. I see Zuba being like a top 20-ish level guy in the weight division. I don't know if he's top 20 or maybe just like a little under it. He's or, been inactive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, too much too soon for Elvis. Probably 30-27 Zuba. I think he beats him up on the feet. I think he's careful enough if they do get to the ground to survive that and just kind of tunes this young kid up. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I really don't want to spend too much time on this. Yeah. Um, I think Zuba... Gets a TKO round one, okay. to be honest. Yeah. Um, I think it's kind of embarrassing that yeah. on a pay-per-view, this is who he's fighting. He's fought decent competition already. He has. You know, uh, he lost to Hakeem Dawadu, I believe. Mm -hmm. It was a fairly close fight. You know, Dawadu really came on at the end. I guess it could have gone either way. Zuba does fight pretty safe. Um, wait, did Zuba win that fight? No, he lost it. No, he lost against but the Kingdom, he, I, yeah. The one thing I really hated was that I don't know if you I know you saw the fight, but mm -hmm. he ran around the last minute of the fight. I guess he thought he had it wrapped up. Yeah. And he was just kind of he was literally just running away. And Dawoodie was like screaming at him, like, let's go, like yeah. let's like let's get into it. and this guy's literally running away from him. Right. I hate that. I hate where's your warrior spirit? Yeah, dude? no, I feel like it. I know I'm sitting on my ass here in, in your dining room, but like <laughs> what the hell's going on, man? Right. And I think this is embarrassing. Uh, you know, I think Elvis Brenner, quite frankly, is a can. Um, I don't, you know, he, I guess he's you think, a, you think he's a can, or do you think the guys he's fought have been cans? I think both. I think okay. he's a can. The guys he's fought are cans. Yeah. I think he's a he's a fine. He's a submission specialist. Yeah. I think Tokugov's wrestling is too good. Yeah. For submission to even be a thing. Yeah, in this for fight. like a heel hook or for like mm -hmm. anyone. It's yeah, not no, going to happen. Agree, I, agree and this guy also you. fights very safe. Mm -hmm. I just don't see it happening. He's also a Khabib guy. Right. So, you know, yeah. do with that info what you will. It makes sense why he's on this card. Mm -hmm. He's been out for a little while. You know, I think this is like a layup, right? Like you said, he was supposed to fight Joel Alvarez. He was yeah. supposed to fight Lucas Almeida. And Joel he was, Alvarez, he was supposed by to fight Na Nate Landwehr. Yeah. I would have I would have watched any one of those Anyone. fights, and I would have loved to see those fights. I think Zuba's legit. He is, and by the way, Joel Alvarez is a jujitsu guy himself, so he's yeah. been kind of training for this style. Yeah, to add sure. To that. Yeah. It doesn't matter. I right. think this guy is levels above mm -hmm. Elvis, and it's not going to matter. Yeah. So, so I, you I, got a TKO? You said? Yeah, I got him by TKO in the first round. Yeah. Probably drops him. With a right and then ground and pound. Okay, yeah. I just see a thirty twenty seven. You know, just kind of. I think there's no way domination. this goes. I think there's no way this goes to. Yeah. Maybe you're right though, because I mean, like we're I said, in agreement, Zuba, right? We're in agreement about the guy. Yeah. and It's not going to be close. So. I think it's a, yeah. this is a silly silly matchup you're comfortable to start. With money line Zuba. Oh, yeah. easily, easy. I would I would go Zuba. I would go Zuba by finish, double chance. Either, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but, yeah. All right. So, let's move forward then. We got Shane Young versus Blake Builder making his debut off the contender. Blake series. the Builder. Bam. Why don't you start us off? <laughs> All right, I will. Um, yeah. I, I really don't like Shane Young. Mm -hmm. I think he is, he is like, um, he, he, he brings shame to. Um, CKB. Yeah, CKB. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. I you know I know he's gotten really fit recently. His last fight, he looked like much, or his last two fights, he looked much improved as far as his physique. He looks different all the time. He looks different, like you said. Yeah, I mean, he, well, before we started this, his hair is always different. Like, that's fine. I, no. None of that stuff really matters to me. You know, I just think not that Blake Builder is anything crazy, right? He's a thirty-two-year-old. You know. Um, Seven does, and o guy, does yeah. sure, but like, like does, not much experience. But he's well, he's been doing this since 2012. Right. Dana doesn't really give contracts to to just like cans at 32. Dana yeah. doesn't want to sign a 32 year old guy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, I watch a bunch of his fights. He fought that guy Buena Fuente. Yeah. Uh, Builder was kind of dominated on the ground on that one. He was rocked on the feet too. Um, he did almost get a triangle from the bottom. Yeah. Eventually, he did get a triangle from the bottom, and the guy was out cold. Yeah. So. Uh, Builder also like that was like, his title fight in. Uh, that's when he got the title. Yeah. yeah, he was like he's also like really compact and powerful. Yeah, great physique. 
you know, I know he's fighting with a lot of emotion too. I think it was like his brother or somebody that passed yeah, away. Yeah. yeah, so which was really sad, obviously. Um, I watched him versus Carvalho. Uh, Build, Builder almost finished him in the first round. He did get caught a few times too. So Builder can be caught. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I just think Young is really not that good, man. He's a kickboxer who can't really fight off the back foot. He certainly can't grapple. Builder does have a few wins by submission. I think for him, it, it's it's put up a shut up, right? I yeah. mean, you're a 32 year old guy making your UFC debut. You know, I, I think this is the time to show it. Shane Young has never showed me anything where I've been like, wow, that's great. You know, he's out. He's yeah. he's lasted some fights. I mean. Ludovic Klein, when he fought him, that was <laughs> that was an absolutely brutal knockout. Yeah, I mean, just one of the more violent knockouts you'll see. I like Ludovic Klein. I do too, but you know, I don't think he's like a world beater yeah, either. No, I think solid. I think some of his hype has died down. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Shane Young has some okay low kicks in that fight. He had some decent low kicks. He was knocked out so hard though. It was one. He was trying to like wrestle the ref. Yeah. it was one of those. Yeah, so that's you know, um, I saw the fight versus Austin Arnett. Arnett was outboxing Shane Young in the first round. Shane Young is super hittable. Uh, you know, he didn't land anything crazy, just kept up the pressure, and he had better cardio, and then he finished the later rounds better, yeah. you know. And then his fight versus Omar Morales, who, again, in my opinion, is not very good. Not He's not a shot, UFC yeah. fighter. I don't think he should be in the UFC. Shane got caught a few times. Close fight, you know. I just, you know, like I said, man, I don't think he's shown me anything special. I don't think he's shown me anything. And he's been in the UFC, right? I mean... Yeah. Two losses in a row. He lost to, obviously, Volkanovski uh, a while ago. Yeah, and then as the soon as he lost team. to him, he, he started training. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That was his UFC debut, right? Or it was one of their UFC debuts. Whatever. It was, yeah, it was yeah. it was his UFC debut. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, man. I mean, I just I just don't see it happening. I know the odds, I think, on this are pretty close. Let me just double check that right now. Um, actually, yeah. Um, Builder is a plus 110 uh, underdog. Slight favorite, minus 130 for Shane Young. Yeah, I love that. I like the odds, man. Yeah. Uh, especially as a parlay piece, I would definitely go Builder. Yeah, um, I agree. I mean, as far as Builder's concerned, he's another guy who's you know pretty active on the ground, so I'm comfortable when it gets there. He he had that Gogo Plata, or he was trying to go for a Gogo Plata in one yep. of his. Um, and he he, his he likes the rear naked. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Um, he actually, he won by rear naked on the uh, contender series. Yeah, yeah, and that was nice. I, I think the one kind of like knock that that I saw, if I had to nitpick something, which there's things to nitpick for sure, definitely. But, but he needs to shore up like his boxing defense. It's weird. It, it looks clean. He has like a lot of head movement, but he keeps his head on the center line. It seems like when they're not striking, he's really kind of doing the most with his head, ducking, bobbing, weaving, like whatever. And then when they get into the exchanges, it's just straight center line. Yep. So I mean, I didn't really like that, but he is a fun fighter to watch though and then as far you know as far as young is concerned you basically said it you know it it is what it is i think we kind of know who he is at this point he hasn't fought in almost two years so the question mark is has he gotten better you would assume so you would hope so i don't know though i think they're both pretty chinny Mm -hmm. too i think shane young is is tougher to finish yeah i just think builder has more he's more explosive i think he's, he's a better athlete overall yeah and i think in the end that's and like I said, man, this is his one shot, right? Like you're not yeah. he's probably not getting another shot if he loses to Shane Young and it's his UFC debut. Yeah. I mean, I think the way to beat Builder is straight shots. Yeah. Which, oh yeah, because he winds up. Right. Yeah. Which Young does throw those straight shots, but I don't think he throws them with too much power behind he has him. No power. There's a there is like a weird world where he wins via knockout young, but I don't think, you know, I don't think we see that here. No. I have uh, Builder by RNC in the third. I, I just think they're going to play in the clinch a little bit, which uh, Young tends to do. Just, mm-hmm. you know, get caught up in that clinch game. Gives up his back. I, I noticed that Builder was super duper quick to take the back. Yeah. I think it was in his contender series fight. Where yeah, he kind of like had like the step through right and immediately took the guy's back. He does that a lot. So I think he finds the back and then uh, gets an RNC here and kind of ruins the homecoming for, for Young. Yep. Yep. Yep, absolutely. Uh, moving on, another, the next fight on the card is Loma Look Bun Me versus... Look Bun You. Look Bun Me. Look Bun Us. Come on, guys. What if the whole time the Look Bun was the friends that we found all on the way? I don't even know what that means. <laughs> I don't know either. I don't like but Loma Look Bun Me and versus Elise Reed. Uh, I think it's the only women's fight on the card, right? Is that two weeks in a row? Just and the last with, one got with, canceled... 
God willing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for what it's worth, man, uh, I'll, I'll take this one sure. first. I do think that both of these ladies are legit. They're I think they're, I think they're actually good women's yeah. fighters. And I don't mean that. Well, I, it is what it is, right? I mean, it, women's it. fighters oftentimes are not very good. I think Loma Lukbunmi is a legit Thai fighter. Mm-hmm. You know, I think she's somebody who can dish out damage. I think she's been in some legit wars. Um, yeah, I really like her, to be honest. I like yep. Elise Reed, too. Me I think, too. <coughs> excuse me. I think Elise Reed is a little bit more green. I think she's still more of a developing kind of prospect. Um, she did have some... She did. She had a few UFC fights, obviously. Yeah. Her last one, Melissa Martinez. Um, she looks pre- very solid, by the way. Solid. Yeah. Solid. Um, yeah, she she Reed actually showed really good Taekwondo. I think that's her base from yes. when she was young. That's like the base that she came up she with. She owns a gym. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so like she's about that life. Yeah, no, that's for sure. Cool. You can tell, and I like I really like her when she gets a little swagger behind her. Yeah, because I, I don't know if you, I think it was a Martinez fight. Or maybe it wasn't. Yeah, she started getting, like, yellow. She, yeah, she, like, and, yeah, and she was, like, kind of, you know, styling on her a little bit. I liked it. I liked that, you know. Um, she's got good taekwondo. She had a big right-hand knockdown in the first round versus Martinez. She, I feel like she does telegraph her punches a little bit. A little bit. You know, I think against somebody who's exper- as experienced as uh, Loma Lukbunmi is, I think it's, you know, that's going to potentially be a problem. Um Versus Sam Hughes, Elise wanted to strike, but the other lady really wanted to wrestle her. So I'm, more than anything, I'm kind of excited to see two legitimate women strikers yeah. go against each other. Chances are neither of them are really going to try to wrestle each other. No way. I yeah. do think that Loma is the more experienced fighter in general, so I do think that she's going to she'll be if if it goes to the ground, she has more of a chance to win it than Elise Reed does. Yes, agreed. Elise Reed maybe has more power in her hands than than Loma. But I'm gonna go with Loma Lukbunmi by decision. Mm-hmm. I think she her her Thai boxing is legit. Um, she can be a little flat footed at times. I think she's a really decent striker. She's got very good takedown defense, yep. except for when she fought Lupi God- Godinez. Uh, Lupi Godinez, obviously a legitimate. She mauls people, yeah. Uh, she mauls people. She's legit. You know, she did get taken down a bunch of times in that fight. I want to say like four times in that fight. Uh, and and you know it was still a pretty close fight though you know yeah. uh, she also got caught a few times in that fight and, and I think really displayed that she's got a decent chin um, at times I think she she's too content being more of a counter striker at times I want to see her be a little bit more aggressive and be the one on the offensive as opposed to being the one counter striking but yeah at the end of the day I'm still gonna go with Loma look boon me by decision um, Man, if it's gonna if it's gonna be a finish, I would I think I see at least Reed finishing it more than I see Loma. I just don't see it happening. I don't see her getting caught. You know. Yeah, I don't I don't think Loma gets caught either. Uh, at least Reed does have some really good power. You're definitely you know you're spot on with that. She's a former CFF, CFFC Cage Fury champion, which is a pretty big league, so that's kind of a big deal. Uh, like you said, Taekwondo versus Muay Thai. That's gonna be super interesting. I don't see it going to the ground, but again, I yeah, agree me with neither. you. If it does go to the ground, we've seen Loma do better things there. Uh, Elise Reed's losses have all come on the ground. Like, I remember Sajara Eubanks, who's a notorious weight bully. Weight bully, and <laughs> th- didn't she miss? She missed like two weeks ago. That was such got bullshit. Cut. She got that was cut, such, which I'm, She I'm deserved glad. to get yeah. cut, dude. But I, I know she, she kind of like ground and pounded her out. Sam Hughes was able to finish her from the mount. So she has struggled a little bit on the ground. I don't expect us to go there. Again, if we do, I think Loma has the advantage there. I just think Loma, like the, the way she cracks those kicks and some of those elbows, it's pretty violent. And, and I think Loma's a little more, I think she has a little more power. I think she's definitely faster. And she's the younger fighter here. Is so, she really? I don't know why in my mind I felt like Elise Reed was younger. Yeah, she's 27, Loma look bon me or look bon or whatever they're calling her. And Elise Reed's 30. So a three-year mm-hmm. difference. I'm going to take Loma by decision as well. I have 29, 28, but I could, there's definitely, uh, I could definitely see a 30, 27 as well. Yeah, and she's a pretty solid favorite. The reach, 61 and a half for Loma, 63 yeah. for Elise Reed, 5-3 to 5-1. I mean, it's not a huge difference. Yeah, I agree. How do you feel about betting that? Man, I would I would feel moderately comfortable betting on Loma. Yeah, but same. I don't know, man. I mean, we've said this before. I don't like betting women's fights, man. Yeah. It's, it's, I think it's just too hard to t- to call sometimes. You yeah. know, you never know. But I do think that Loma throws legit strikes. She's raw, man. Like I think they both throw legit strikes, not like pillow. Fi- I think they both throw legit like strikes. Like Loma to me looks like uh like uh, this sounds 
Like, uh, don't, you know, take it for what it's worth. But it, she looks like she belongs in one FC. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, she cracks, dude. Like, it, it looks, she looks like a straight Muay Thai fighter. Yeah, she's awesome. Uh, let's move on. Jamie Malarkey versus Francisco Prado. Uh, okay, did we skip Jenkins versus Chinese? Did we skip? Is Jack Jenkins Don Shanus next? Yes. Okay, we'll go to that. Sorry, I have it. I have that one in front of it. Whatever. Uh, Jack Shanus or Jack Jenkins, Don Shanus. Jeez, guys, sorry. Um, I'll let you take that one. Yeah. So first and foremost, Don Shanus. Uh, he had his UFC debut uh, a little bit ago. It was short notice versus Sadiq Yusuf, and that's not the guy you want to debut. I don't know why they did that, man. It was why did they do that? Was it like a? It was a was super it like short a, notice? Yeah, it was like it was like those, somebody needs to hop in. Yep, he's like, this is my opportunity to get into the UFC. Yes. I, it's a no loss yeah, situation. Exactly. Yeah, okay. It was exactly that. Um, didn't we didn't get to see anything there? Yeah, he got. I think he got guillotine. I mean, like we we got, we got to see that he's not a good. Doesn't uh, have great submission defense. Sure, and, and is and, not a grappler. And I guess that's fair, but. He is a grapple heavy guy. Yeah, it, you know, it, it's it's just weird. It's like you don't want to come in against a top ten guy in the UFC. No, he was like, ranked twelfth at the time, and Sadiq Yusuf is legit, yeah. dude. I mean, he belongs there, right? That was actually Sadiq Yusuf's first win by submission, by the way. And I mean, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, like I guess you know, to each their own. I'm just like, saying, like, yeah, no, it, it's not. Sadiq great. Yusuf's raw, yeah. so you don't want to be fighting him in your debut. Um, anyways, this guy's a former collegiate linebacker. He's tiny though. He's five five. Which is I what guess, college was he at? I have no idea, but he played linebacker in college. Five five. Five five. Linebacker. If I saw a five five linebacker, you get big booted, my guy. <laughs> You're catching a big boot. He's, uh, yeah, I guess five five one forty five. Right? Like, what are you doing? That's not even a corner. I just thought about Bro, that. One forty. I was thinking it as like a compliment. Like, hey, he's five five played linebacker, but the way you, it's like, yeah, who's that guy? Some whack ass school. Dude. I'm running him over. <laughs> he's getting <laughs> truck, dude. Yeah, I changed my mind about this guy. No, I'm just playing. Uh, <laughs> anyways, he's good in the clinch. He's heavy against the cage. He's a grappler. Throws big hooks on the feet. Ground and pound kind of guy. That's what he's looking to do. He has solid power. He has a 10-second KO on his record, which is, I guess, pretty cool. Anytime you, you get can. that. Yeah, but whatever. You know. Uh, he got the guy in like the Muay Thai plum and kneed him in the face. So I'm I did see that, yeah. I'm down. Then you have Jack Jenkins, the Australian contender series guy, making his UFC debut at home. Strong as hell, good takedown defense, strong in the clinch, good knees and trips as well. He busted his opponent in the contender series up with some super vicious elbows on the ground. It, th- that was like a oh, crime scene. Dude, that yeah, was, it was like a brutal. crime scene. I loved it. I loved it. Um, You're talking about... Um, he just I don't remember who it was, but he violently was elbowing him and busting him up. Like There was uh, so much Was blood. it Linares? Yeah, I think it Maybe. was. Dude, it was I've bad. watched like 150 fights in the last It was, And then not only that, he like, was going for it. Yeah, he, he, he was violent. He, as soon as he saw that was that, that thing was bleeding, that's an like attack. Yeah. But yeah, I, I like his... In the stand-up department, I like his leg kicks. He strikes to kind of like get into the clinch, mm-hmm. which, you know, that's his game, I guess. He's not like the cleanest striker, but he does have some finishing ability. Eight of his ten wins have been by finish, five knockouts, three subs, Uh both his losses in his professional career have been by submission, so they're, you know, do with that what you want. But here's the thing. I'm not too confident in Jenkins, but I'm going to take his youth here. Mm-hmm. Like, you know. Why would you do that to him? I, what do you mean? You just took his youth? Oh, damn. I, yeah. yeah that's, I, I wish I could have his youth. I swear to God. Actually, 29 is not that long. So. <laughs> it's really not Anyways, true. I, I'm not too confident in him. I'll take the young guy at home here. Contrary to what we saw in his debut, I don't think Don Shanus is, like, super easy to finish. Don Shameless Shanus. Shameless Shanus. I don't think he's, like, too easy to finish, having watched some of his other fights. I'll take Jenkins by decision. Probably a 30-27. Or, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Know. I think Shanus is going to... I said Jenkins, right? Jenkins, 30-27. I just want to make that clear. No, you said Shanus, dude. Jenkins. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. Um, yeah, I think Shane is going to take it in his anus, bro. I think Jack <laughs> Jenkins is legit. Uh, I actually really like this guy, you know, and I know we like, you know, we, I haven't seen a ton of him off like, you know, really great competition. Yeah. Um, you know, this is um, this is his UFC debut. Yep. I really like his boxing. I think it's super crisp and technical. Really. Oh man, you don't think so? I, I didn't think it was like I thought it was good. I, I didn't thought think his it was boxing like, was like like not, I don't I don't want to say world class, but boxing for MMA I thought was really really crisp. Okay, fair. He likes the calf kick too. I think he takes really good angles. Like mm-hmm. I really love like the angles at which he takes his uppercuts and whatnot. He's got a really beautiful jab. 
Um, he does he, he, like he, he in the Costa fight, for example. He did slow down considerably. Yeah. He came out super hot. He was absolutely whooping his ass. Yeah, you know, um, he did have a takedown against Linares. It was like perfectly timed, mm-hmm. like perfectly timed. Yeah, I think he had two actually against them. Um, my only concern <laughs> is it's almost like he doesn't trust himself. Like I want, I want him to when he unloads with his hands. I think he's so crisp. He's hesitant. I, I just want like. I, I, I don't wrestle, dude. Yeah. I don't want to see you wrestle. Well, he's pretty good at it. No, he's fine at it. That's yeah. fine. I just think his boxing is so crazy. I think it's levels oh, beyond. Oh, man, levels beyond. So that's so wild to me. No, nah, I wouldn't like, say levels beyond because Sheamus is not bad, man. Like, he had three, like, his last three fights before this, I think, were all first round KOs. Yeah. Let, so, let's, you know, I'm sorry. Can we, let's forget about Sheamus here for a yeah. second. Yeah. So when it comes to Jack Jenkins, yeah, his boxing technique, man, I think it's really good. You think it's? I'm like, a boxer. Like, do you think? I know. Do you think uh, it's like? You think it's like elite? Do you think it's upper echelon? Like, what do you man, think? Man, I think technique wise, yeah. I think he's like top ten in the division. That's really wild right now. <laughs> because that's insane. I think he looks really good. I think, boxing, I think man. he's got. I just like think. I just think he doesn't power. trust his boxing. Like, just trust your own boxing. You're and, really good and at. That's it. one of the things that like. I have noted down here is like I don't think he's confident in it, which is so like, stupid. Like it, I, don't know, I, I think we both like to bang, man. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know, like sh- like Jenkins sometimes instead of like he'll go to his boxing and then he'll spam leg kicks. Yeah, and it's like, dude, stop with the damn leg kicks. Stop with the takedowns. It's good leg kicks. Piece, though. good leg kicks for sure, and it's a great weapon. But piece this guy up, man. Like I don't know. I think if he trusts his striking, he's gonna piece up. Shanus and I'm yeah. calling a TKO in the second round. Down. So we both have the same guy. I have a 29-28. You have a TKO. Where do you see that? You said second round. Second round. Yeah. 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 Just like some ground, like right hand. Uh, I think <laughs> I don't think it's going to be out cold, but yeah. I think he's going to get really badly rocked okay. with something on the feet, and yeah. then if he trusts himself, though, man, I, I I'm not like maybe I sound more confident than I am in this. Yeah. I just think if he trusts himself, this is this is something he should win. Fair and, and like I said, I I'm taking Jenkins to win here. I'm not too confident in it. Like I think he'll win, but whatever, you know, we shall see. To each their own. Smart. We shall see. Yep. Uh, moving on, next fight on the card, which you were really excited to get to. So fun was, was Jamie Malarkey versus Ya Boy. Yeah. Ya Boy Francisco Prado, yeah. the Argentinian fighter. Can I claim him? As a my boy? Man, yeah. Why not? 20 years old. Super exciting prospect. Yeah. A little pit bull, man. That dude is looks really good, right? Like, he looks very exciting. I'll let you go first on this one because yeah. I know you really like this guy. I do, yeah, too. I, but Dude, when I when I saw this guy, like, when I was watching the film, I was like, who is this guy? Got to look him up oh on God. YouTube. You know? Got to look him up on YouTube. There's <laughs> yeah. no footage on Well, Fight actually, you, you had to look him up on YouTube. But yeah, that's yeah, what it literally is. No, There were no fights there, on There's no fights yeah. on Fight Pass, no fights on ESPN+. ESPN, yep. Plus, like, so I'm, I'm just looking for this dude. I find some 20-year-old kid in the middle of Argentina, 11-0, and 0, just violently knocking people out yep. left and right in the first round. Like, super-duper fun. All finishes, in his, it, all 11 fights by finish, eight in the first round. He's only been to the third round once in his young career. He just fought in December, so he's getting a quick turnaround here. Um, he had a quick first round KO there. Like he's got dumb power. He's got like really, yeah. really dumb power for 155. One thing that worries me is that he fights with no fear. Like this kid comes forward, he swings wild, he spins, he does like he's insane. never been tested. Yeah, I mean he's never been tested. It's, it's that's my number one concern. Defeated. Exactly that yeah. is that, and and especially from a look, the guys that he fought actually look pretty decent. Solid, and they have, yeah. And they have decent when you look records, at their records. Yeah, and they were a lot older, obviously. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm not taking that away from him. It's not like Argentina's the hotbed, Dagestan yeah. or America or you know Brazil or Brazil whatever, yeah. or you know even even Mexico, right? right? Like you know, it's not like a hotbed of UFC fighters. But that's 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 my only concern, really. Mm-hmm. And I'm sorry to cut you off. Is that's fine. Uh, especially when you're that young, it's so easy. I feel like to get so confident. Yeah. And he's hittable at times. You very. Know? So, he get, he doesn't mind getting cracked. He doesn't get out of the way very well. Like he is coming forward. He's swinging wild. He's throwing, like I said, spinning stuff. He's throwing insane, you know, overhands and hooks and whatever. 
Dude, he is super exciting, and I hope he wins. Like, I'm just going to go there. That's a my boy. I'm, I'm claiming him here. No, yeah, take him. Yeah. And then on the other hand, you have Jamie Malarkey. The thing is, Jamie Malarkey is so much bigger, right? His yeah. losses have come to good guys. It was uh, Brad Riddell, Ferez ZM, and Jalen Turner, mm-hmm. which is like, if you're going to lose to three guys, it might as well be those three, I guess. Oh. <laughs> Earlier in his career, he had a loss to Volkanovski. They mm-hmm. fought on the regional scene. It seems uh, like a lot of people did on this card. In this card, yeah. It's, it's yeah. really funky. Um, Volkanovski put him out badly. Yes. That, that was uh, that was dope. He's got a, such a punchable face. So punchable. He's got like eyebrows that like go over He looks like eyes. Frankenstein. I don't like him. I don't like him either. Yeah. And originally, he's, he, I mean, he's tough. He's got good power. Originally, I was picking him. I'm changing my mind live. Wow. I'm changing my mind here. Wow. Yeah. I'm just going to go with it. Francisco Prado is a my boy. Yeah. And I got to go first round KO for him. And, <laughs> and, if, and if he gets wow, yeah, well, dude, that's not gonna happen. That's the way he fights. That's that's not that's, gonna happen. Jamie Malarkey has been touched up. You know, he, he he gets touched up for sure. So originally, I had it as a Jamie Malarkey first round KO. I'm flipping the script. Wow, well, so. you're crazy for even saying that to begin with. Flip I th- I feel like let's get it. Um, yeah, I, I I mean I like you said you. What else is there to be said about Prado? I really like him. I like his prospects as a UFC fighter moving forward more right. than anything. It's I don't think this fight is gonna is a make or break fight for him. He's twenty years old. Yeah, you know what I mean. Um, I think Malarkey's been tested against legit competition. He holds wins against Devontae Smith, Kama Worthy, who I know Kama Worthy's not anything special now. Yeah. At the time, he was a big time prospect, and Michael Johnson. And Michael Johnson, I know, is like the guy who. You know, he's beat Dustin Poirier. And I love his post the, the other day. The you see that? Yeah, 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 yeah. I love that. That, was dope. Um, that knockout was uh, vicious. Oh, my God. Vicious. It was vicious. I'm thinking about the right one, right? The, like, right hook. Yeah, right oh, yeah, yeah, it was okay. bad, dude. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just think Jamie Malarkey is really hard to finish. He's a lot bigger than Prado. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, he throws a lot of feints. He's got good movement. He's not somebody that's going to stand there like a can and get wet, wailed no, on by Prado. Like, at all. I don't see him getting knocked out like that. And honestly, there's really no evidence of Jamie Malarkey getting knocked out like that. He's fought guys who I feel like are just as explosive and powerful who are bigger for the division. Arguably. I think, I think for example, Devontae Smith, right? Mm-hmm. You, you watched that fight? Yes. So, Devontae Smith is so explosive. And he was catching him, man. I just, uh, But he kept the pressure on. Even, even after he was getting caught, he kept the pressure on. Yep. I just don't see somebody like Prado coming in. And it, obviously, he's going to be very confident. It's his UFC debut. Mm-hmm. I just don't see it happening, man. He looks damn legit for 20 years old. Prado does. I just think, like I said, he hasn't been tested. He's got serious power. I think Jamie Malarkey, the competition that he's fought, and he's fought an explosive, powerful athlete before Yeah. who has been bigger. Maybe not as skilled as Prado. I just think he keeps coming, man. He takes the shots. He keeps coming. I don't see him getting knocked down. Or knocked out, I'm sorry. I'm going to go with Malarkey. Uh, probably by decision. I could see it by TKO, but I'm going to go with decision. Okay, I just want to clarify one thing really quickly. The Michael Johnson knockout was the Josh Emmett fight. So oh, I, yes. I was mistaken. Um, Josh Emmett violently knocked out Michael Johnson. Jamie Malarkey. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about Michael no, no, Johnson no. knocking out. Okay. No, Michael Johnson beat... Uh, he beat Jamie Malarkey on a split decision. Um, Wait. No, he didn't. Am I wrong? Jamie Malarkey beat him by split decision. Yeah, he did. Yeah, my bad. And that could have gone either way. Yeah. Um, but still. Whatever. And that was the Fazeev fight, and that, that was a really close fight. Uh, I believe I actually had it to Michael Johnson. I remember watching that live and then yesterday as well. I think I scored it for Johnson. It was that first round where, like, the knockout – or yep. they both dropped each other. It was like, who wins that first round? Anyways. Um, going back to this, as, as, as here's the way I see it, right? I have written here malarkey by knockout, mm-hmm. and I, that's what I think. That's what it should be. And I'm do the odds yeah. reflect that? What He's hittable, man. He what is hittable. Fight? Do you know? Uh, malarkey is like a fairly sizable favorite. I want to say like minus two hundred. Let me just confirm that. Okay. Malarkey is a. By the way, guys. Like and subscribe. <laughs> just, <laughs> just throw that in. Uh, he's a minus two sixty favorite. Okay. Uh, plus plus two ten for Francisco Prado. So plus two ten for Prado. You assume he throw some extra on that. For, I'm not gonna assume anything, knockout. brother. Okay, my bad. I'll let him do his thing. That's fair. Who am I to box him in? But 
He's 20 years old. The knockout is definitely going to be, like, what, 240, 250? More, you probably, probably more than like, that, yeah. I do think Malarkey wins this fight, but I would not bet on Jamie Malarkey here. Yeah. I would rather bet uh, Prado by knockout. And since I claimed him as a my guy, I have to stick with it. Yeah. So I'm going to go Prado by first round knockout. Do we get X amount of my guys? Throughout the year, or are we just going to make a scene? Yeah, it's not a my it, guy. That's the fantasy footballers. It's the my boys. It's like a your boy. Your boy. Yeah, it's a my, my boy. boy. Well, now we could do my guy. We don't have to be like them. Well, they do my guy. Oh, they do my guy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we do my boy then. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, so, I understand now. I'm Sorry. claiming him as a my boy. Okay. Whatever. We move forward. Shannon Ross versus Clayton Rodriguez. Is that yeah. what you have next there? Yes, I do. Awesome. So we're back on track here. Are you looking at topology? Uh, I'm looking at my notes. Okay. But I think it was from Tapology. Okay. I think I was just so excited to get to that yeah. fight that I jumped. You're an excitable fella. Yeah, well, I yeah. am. Shannon yeah. Ross, Clayton Rodriguez, why don't you take the uh, the reins here? Sure. Shannon Ross um, is somebody... Turkish who, delight, by the way. I was literally just going to say, yeah. it's a guy named Shannon <laughs> from Australia who calls himself, who looks and calls himself, who looks like a Turkish guy and calls himself the Turkish delight. But he's not Turkish at all. So I'm very confused by the yeah. entire setup. Yeah. Off whatever. the bat. So, I'm keep, sketched keep out. Guessing, right? Clayton by not imagine. No, I'm just <laughs> um, man. Clayton Rodriguez, what a specimen! I like him. An absolute specimen. Like he is so explosive, and I don't even need to need to look at my notes. I remember the fights. You know, yeah. he's crazy, right? My only thing is, like, he goes nuts. Yes. Right, and did you watch the CJ Vergara fight? Absolutely. CJ Vergara either has the strongest chin of all oh, time. Oh, that's right, you were. Yeah. That was Gaethje. Uh, Gaethje and uh, Oliveira. Yep. Mm-hmm. So he, he either has the strongest chin of all time, or Clayton's just simply not that strong. Right. Because, dude, he was getting pieced up, and then CJ Vergara ended up winning that, that fight by split decision. Mm-hmm. He kept coming at him like it was nothing, and yeah. Clayton throws all kinds of crazy throw, crazy like. Spinning He's basically the Mi- Michel Pereira of this division. Yeah, he has a capoeira background. He has a, excuse me, he has a Muay Thai background. Super explosive and fast. Loves the leg kick. Loves the body kick. Mm-hmm. I would say he's better kicking than he is punching. Yes. To be honest. Yeah, yeah, he is. Um, with his hands, he gets kind of wild. He swings a little bit wildly for my taste. Um, he was a huge favorite against uh, CJ Vergara, and he lost by a split decision. He was a huge favorite on his UFC debut, though. That's got to count for something, right? There's like jitters Absolutely. and there's whatever. And I, I don't think ZJ... He didn't look jittery, though. It's just no. CJ Vergara just looked so good. And, and people think CJ Vergara is like a trash can. And I, I, don't don't I don't think that at all. I don't think that at all. I feel like that's like the there's like that in the MMA community, and I don't buy it. Really? Yeah. I don't think that at all. He's Like I said, he's got the cup weight of background. You know, in the Contender Series fight, he was... Taken down a guy like this who's such an elite striker, mm-hmm. you want to see what happens when he gets taken to the ground. Yeah. In his contender series fight, he was taken to the ground mm-hmm. and he literally popped right back up. And that was against um, Santo Cur- Curatolo. Yeah, dude, did you do you see that? The way he the, like the technique was perfect. Yeah, but the explosion on that was incredible, man. He, he, he's good. He popped right back up. That was crazy to me. The Vergara fight when he was on the ground, we saw him put Vergara in like a calf slicer. Yes. And I don't know if that's like technique or if that's lucky to end up in a game. Yeah, maybe. But maybe. It was nice. Um, no, first of all, that fight was an amazing fight. He was fight. able to sweep That was such a times. good fight, though. It like, was. I, that was probably one of my top three fights that I've watched in the last, she like, did, for, yeah. for the preparation for this card. Yeah. One of my favorite fights that I've watched. Interesting. Um, Shannon Ross, you know, he was a champion in Australia at Eternal. His best asset, in my opinion, is his hands, right? It, it, he's got a really nice overhand right. I just don't think he's anything special, man. Yeah. You know, um, he was actually dropped in his last fight in in, in like Eternal, seven times. very badly, and then he was finished by the rear naked choke. You know, he won his UAE debut, the one fight that he had yeah. at UAE. He lost on the Contender Series. I just I haven't seen anything really special at all about him. Who did he lose? He lost to uh, um, Vinicius Salvador, right? Yeah, Vinicius. Vin- yeah, I don't know, man. Nothing yeah. special for me. I think Clayton is like he's 27 years old he feels younger than that Mm -hmm. even i don't know i think he's something special though i think his striking is something special i think there's nothing special about shannon ross i'm gonna go clayton rodriguez i i probably by decision okay fair um yeah 
I mean, Clayson Rodriguez is definitely the more talented of the two here. He's the younger guy here. Uh, as far as Shannon Ross is concerned, he actually lost his contender series fight, and then Dana liked him so much yeah. that he went and signed him. And and that's like fine. No, Both I don't are, like that, man. I don't like it either. But you lost on the you lost on the feeder system, right? This is bullshit. Like, you shouldn't even be here, dude. I think the reason they signed him is there's this card in Australia. They need Australian. That's all it is. Yeah, they need Australian guys here. I mean, he's got a, he's got really good pace. He's got good cardio. He's like he's scrappy. And I know that sounds like a backhanded compliment when we're talking about yeah. professional fighters. But he is scrappy for what that's worth. It's a huge opportunity for him here, though. Fighting yeah. a, a top prospect kind of guy at home. That's a big deal. I see Rodriguez being the more powerful striker here. I think he eventually gets some of those wild strikes to land, uh, gets himself a TKO late in this fight. He throws some wild shit. Yeah, and, and, yeah. Uh, and with Shannon Ross, like you said, he's hittable. And you mentioned uh, his last fight, he got dropped. I think it was in his contender series fight, he got dropped like four times. It was like three yeah, or four it times. it was bad. Um, uh, and granted, he survived. But right, until he didn't. Until he didn't. Yeah. And then I, I think Ross puts on a solid, tough performance here in front of his home crowd, but the guy hasn't won since 2019. And he's fighting guys in UAE, which is a good league, and, and guys in the Contender Series, which is good, but it's not the UFC. You know what I mean? He's only fought twice since 2020. He's not active. Yeah. Yeah. Fight of the night contender, maybe, because that guy is scrappy, but we move forward. I think you're wrong. You think it's boring and quick? No, no, no. I'm not saying that. I think the fight of the night is this next fight, yeah. which is Joshua Kulibau versus Melsik Bagdarsian. Bagdasarian. Bagdasarian. Yeah. He melts sick. <laughs> I hope... God willing, he's all right. all right. I'll let you take this one first. Yeah. Uh, Joshua Kulabal, Melsik Bagdasarian. It's one of those fights that, as you said, can be fight of the night, along with the one before it, and honestly, the one after it. Like, these fights... I think these three are going to be bangers. Um, anyways... Melsic the gun Bogdasarian. He's Armenian kickboxer. You think Pedro versus Bokoskis could be fight of the night? I think it could be fun. <laughs> I think we can get a violent knockout. A bonus. <laughs> You're out of your I'm mind. I'm sorry, a bonus. My bad. A bonus is sure, what, what sure. I meant to say. Anywho, let's stick here and then yeah. we'll go there. Okay, do you know? Okay. Yeah, that's fair. Anyways, Melsic Bogdasarian. Uh, he fought Dennis Bazooka. And Bazooka's first uh, Dana White contender. That was his name? Fight. Yeah. Dennis Bazooka? Bazuchka. Okay. He's one of your okay. people, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, don't butcher his name like they that. They say Bazooka. Anyways, he's a, Bazooka's a Sarah Longo guy. He's boys with, like, Aljo and Marab. Side note, he needs to be in the UFC. He's on a huge winning streak, and yada, yada. <laughs> it's Bazooka. Bazooka. <laughs> uh, that sounds a lot. If that's not his nickname, yeah. what's wrong with you, Dennis? Come on, Dennis. Come on, bro. Anyways, uh... 2-0 in the UFC here. He has a uh, KO over Colin Anglin and a decision win over Bruno Souza. Melsic's super fast and powerful as hell. Disgusting striking ability, obviously being a kickboxer. Vicious kicks. Uh, put Anglin out with a nasty head kick. Uh, got a bonus for that. Fast hands. Mixes it up well to the body and head. Cardio's a little sus. It's a little bit of an issue. For who? Bagdasarian? Yeah. yeah. It's a little sus. Because um, he goes hard, dude. Very hard, yeah. He like, comes out he just hard. just goes for it. I did like seeing him being able to get up against a wrestler in Colin Anglin uh, when he was taken down. Side note, he's a 3-0 and pro boxer. He's 9-2 and in pro kickboxing, fought in K-1. Yeah. So he, he's definitely like a decorated striker. Then we have Joshua Kuya Kulabao fighting Shout out Shout out all my Filipino homies. Hey, let's go. My goddaughter's Filipino. I know that. I love Filipino people. And people. I love the culture. We grew up honestly. with a bunch of them. So many. And we got Kuya here. Kuya means yeah. uh, brother. I thought it was uncle. No, queer means brother. I'm down. Yeah. I'll take your word for it. No, I, okay. no it's 100%. Okay. Yeah. Only loss of uh, Kulabau's career was in his UFC debut, uh, going up against Jalen Turner. So, no, you know. That has aged pretty well, I would yeah, say. Yeah, no, no shame in that. He replaced Jamie Malarkey in that fight, and like you said, that's aged really well. He's 2-1-1 one, and one in the UFC. He has a draw against your boy, Charles Jourdain. I love Charles Jordan. I know you. Yeah. That's why he's your boy. Yep. And then decision wins over Shailen Norton Becca, and he shattered, uh, whose nose he shattered. Yeah. And then he beat Sung Woo Choi. He's a boxer. He's not scared to brawl. If I tell you he's like a Filipino guy that grew up in Australia, I think that's what you would assume he fights like. Yep. Right? So he's And that how guy. would you assume he plays basketball? Very fast with good handles. Yep. You know? Yep. Probably likes to drive and pretty good layup package. Yep. Anyways, uh, good power. Finished five of his eight career first eight career fights via KOTKO 
Good footwork, good cardio. He hasn't gotten any finishes in the UFC yet, but you know he's working on it. I guess. You think? <laughs> I hope so. You talk to him? No, but I, I would assume that he's yeah, looking for probably. that. Probably. Yeah. I don't see this fight going to the ground at all. It's obviously going to be a stand-up war. Like I said earlier, I think this is going to be a potential fight of the night banger. That being said, give me a 29-28 from Melsic. I think he just wins the first two rounds. As he slows down, Coolabout starts to touch him up a little bit. Too little, too late. And we get a 29-28. Okay. Yeah, I don't hate it, man. Yeah. Um, I really genuinely do believe that this is going to be the fight of the night. Yeah. Not counting the co-main event, I would say. The main yeah. event, I don't think, is going to be a super great fight. We'll get to sure. it. Um, yeah, man. Coolabout versus Jordan. You know, he showed he's a great kickboxer. He loves to switch stances. Great teep kick. You know, great arsenal of strikes. Charles Jordan tried to put a submission on him a couple times in that fight and wasn't yeah. successful. You know, um, the Sung Woo Choi fight was crazy, man. Holy yeah. shit. Like, Sung Woo Choi maybe is not who I thought he was. I thought he was going to be like, I actually lost a lot of money on that fight, to be honest. Yeah. It was dumb, too. I think originally, well, first of all, I want to say when I saw... Bagdasarian for the first time, do you know? I saw him and I was watching the fights by myself and I was like, holy shit, this guy is incredible. Yeah, he's Like, I was like, this is going to be one of my boys. Like, I really yeah. like this guy. You wanted to claim him? I, I think I did. Um, <laughs> I think you did. I just, man, ah, like, I think he comes out too hot, man. And yeah. I think, like, I re I'm really excited to see two strike. I'm really excited to see Kulibau. I'm really excited to see Bagdasarian. Both great strikers. Such yeah. different strikers. Very I'm just really excited to see them fighting two guys. Like we know that neither of them are going to try to take it to the ground. If it does, I think Kulibau has the advantage. I think Kulibau is very underrated. Honestly, yeah, he's good. Um, yeah, uh, the Choi fight to me was crazy because Choi is like a champion, fight, a champion striker. You yeah. know, like so. I don't know, man. I don't want to spend too much time on it. It's really hard to call this one for me. I think if it goes to the decision, and I think it will. Because I think if it's if anybody's going to get the finish, I think it's going to be Bagdasarian. Sure. I don't see it going with to a finish. I think that Kulibau is savvy enough to stay out of the way. Ah, it's hard, man. It's really hard for me. I, I want to pick Bagdasarian. I think I'm going to go with Kulibau by decision. Okay, so we uh, agree to disagree here? Yeah. All right, let's get it. Yeah. We'll, we'll put something on that. Uh, we move forward. Tyson Pedro, Modestas Bacascas, just to... Clear my name up. I don't want to be that guy. I don't want you guys to think low of me. Yeah. Like bad on me. <laughs> I've thought low of you for That's over fine. a decade but you now. you know me. A lot of these people don't really know me like that. I don't think Tyson Pedro Modestas Bacascas is going to be a good fight at all. Uh, I don't even really want to get into it. I think Tyson Pedro cleans him up and knocks him out in the first round. Um, here's the thing. It's unfortunate for Modestas Bacascas, Dino, because... He got dealt like a really bad hand by the UFC. He came in, he he immediately faced a bunch of killers, got his knee like ripped out of its socket. I hated that. And got I really hated yeah, that. Me too. I really hate I like Khalil Roundtree a Same. lot. I really, really, really hated that. Especially mm -hmm. somebody who has had knee injuries before. <laughs> like I really hated that, dude. And then I think that kick should be illegal. Yeah. For the record. I think that kick should genuinely the what what do you want to call it? The inside I mean, it was like a teep, but like it was weird. No, it's I don't not know a teep. What it was, Is dude. it a teep? It's not a teep. It's a. Uh, it's like an inside like knee kick. It should not be legal in the UFC, in my opinion. It, it was disgusting. It was disgusting. Um, and then he had uh, he he fought Oleg Jacek, and I think he Yo fought boy. He, he fought Jimmy Crute when Jimmy Crute was like on top of the world. Yeah. And looked unbeatable for well, a that while. That seems there. like a long time ago. It does. Anyways, he's a four-time national British kickboxing champion, so he is pretty good. I just think he's not even going to get a chance to put that on display here. Um, Tyson Pedro comes forward, and he comes to touch you up. And I, I see a first-round knockout here, unfortunately, for uh, for Modestus. Not for him. I see him getting knocked out. It's unfortunate for yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah, I think I, I agree with you 100% on this yeah. one, except I think it's probably it's going to be a TKO in the second round. Yeah. I think he will survive the first. I think it's absolutely laughable, the competition that – Tyson Pedro's had. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is, man. I know he's had a lot of injuries. Yeah. I think the UFC like really, really wants him. To, it's like a Vince McMahon thing yeah. where like he's got the look. He's sure. got the look. Like I really do think so. Like I think like he, they want him to be good. 
And I genuinely, I don't think he's that good. He's I really, not, I really don't not. think Tyson Pedro is that good. I, I think, think he's, he's got a cool player. name, yeah. Tyson, as a first name, as very cool, right? And it just makes sense. But good frame for two hundred five. He's got a great frame. Yeah. I will also say though, his last few fights, he has actually looked like what he was like hyped up to be. He's looked pretty damn good in his last fights. I think Modestus has gotten worse since his knee injury. He fell out of the UFC. He came back. You know, I just, he, he doesn't move very fast. He looks hesitant. You know, I think Pedro's fight, uh, first of all, Modestus, he did have a violent knockout. Yeah, in well, Cage Warriors. Cage Warriors, yeah. yeah. I just think Tyson Pedro is finally kind of getting to his prime. And one of the more babied fighters in the UFC that I've yeah, seen in recent times. Absolutely. I think I still kind of think he kind of sucks, to be honest. I don't think he's going to be anything special in the, in the light heavyweight division. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, for, God forbid, Jamal Hill, I think, absolutely violently knocks him out. Yeah. Um, I mean, he got he got knocked out by Shogun. And he was winning that fight, too. Yeah. He should have won that right. fight, yeah. He'll, he'll forever be the last guy that Shogun Shogun finished. actually won again, yeah. Finished. Finished, yeah. Yeah. I think Pedro should be the faster fighter. He's got the grappling edge. I don't love either of these guys. I don't think either of these guys are going to be anything special. I'm going to go Pedro, TKO second round. Yeah, He's just looked better, and he looks like he's gaining steam. Really quickly. I mean, look at the... I just want to throw this in. His losses in the UFC have come to Alir Latifi, Ovin St. Pru, and, and Mauricio Shogun Hua. Yeah. And, and, Hua! And then when you compare that to Bukaskis, and I don't have that pulled up, and we're not even going to waste too much time on it. It's like the resume is, is not the same. It's just not the same. Yep. It's unfortunate. Anywho, your boy. Jimmy Krut. Alonzo Menefield is your boy, right? True. I just like to say Jimmy. Jimmy Krut. Yeah. Yeah, Jimmy Krut looked like he was on top of the world. It looked like he was going to be the next... Dude at 205. Yep. And then he wasn't. And then he wasn't. Yeah. And, and what do you got to say about this fight? Ah, this is hard for me, man. Same. Like, I've been going back. I think I asked you about this earlier. Yeah. We don't like, to, I don't like to discuss too much yeah. before with this guy because I like to save it for this situation, obviously. Um, ah, it's so tough for me, man. Jimmy Crude, I think, is not that good, to be honest. Yeah. And. I think he's overrated. I think I'm kind of shocked to see the odds this close, though, to be honest. I yeah. think Jimmy Crute should probably be a bigger favorite. Minifield is not good. He's not good. He is a goddamn specimen physically. Yeah. He's so jacked. And he's so strong. And he's, he's not... Pat Barry, which is, like, huge. He's not... What do you think he drinks? Minifield? No, Jimmy Crute. Jimmy Crute? What do you think they both drink? What do you think they're going Jimmy to Jimmy drink? Crute drinks Guinness, dude. Uh-huh. For sure, I feel like he's like a okay. good, he's like a good. What about Menafield? Alonzo Menafield? Yeah. Probably like cognac. You think cognac? Yeah. Like Hennessy? Or like some conjure. Conjure. Damn, conjure. Shout out Luda. <laughs> Dude, oh, I no. love conjure. It was good. Conjure apple juice. conjure, make them get naked. If you know, you know. <laughs> That's if right. If you know, you know. Um, ah, this is really tough for me, man. He's not, uh, uh, Crute is not technical. Alonzo's not technical either, God forbid. Um, he swings so wild. Oh, this is really hard for Super me. Tough. I feel like there's a very, very good chance that Alonzo Menifield just catches Jimmy Crute. But from like a skill perspective, Jimmy Crute should win this. Yeah. Uh, are you going Jimmy Crute? I'm going Alonzo Menifield by knockout. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. I think it's a crapshoot, right? The odds, the last time I looked at him, it was minus 210 for Jimmy Crute. And I do think that's a little too high. Jimmy Crute. Jimmy Crute. I like saying it. It's a fun name. Yeah. Uh, I think those odds are a little high, but I'm going to trust him at home. Alonzo Menifield doesn't beat anybody good. Right, but like he's got a chance. He's, he's got, got the atomic option, powerful, right? It's atomic yeah. Alonzo Menifield. He's got the if atomic If Jimmy Crute loses uh, this, he option. should leave. No, I don't think he should leave. No, he should go home. What, what is he? He's on a two-fight losing streak, Go on right? get, Jimmy. He's on a two-fight losing streak. It's Anthony Smith. Go on get. Go on get? Go on get. You're going to do that to Jimmy? Jimmy Kirk. Uh, you're just praising his name. No, I'm just saying, like, if you lose to Alonzo Menifield, <laughs> you, should, you shouldn't be here, dude. All right, here's what I'm saying, though. He looked like a world beater. Who did? Jimmy Crute. Jimmy Crute? That's yeah. crazy. He looked like a world beater before the Anthony Smith fight. He was knocking people out and, like, messing dudes up. And then he got hit with a leg kick. He got drop foot. Yeah. Which I don't think anything's fluky in MMA, but drop foot's fluky. Yeah. It, seems, it seems like a like a legend. 
right? Yeah, and it just it seems like, oh, sometimes. like you heard about the drop foot, and, like, and it happens sometimes. But anyways, that happened, and then he got knocked out by Jamal Hill, which like at this point, Jamal Hill's the champion, so like, what are you gonna do about it? Yeah. So he I also he, he did beat Modestus Bukowskis. Right, Modestus. I'm telling you, he has been dealt a terrible hand. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go with Jimmy Crute. I think he probably finds like an arm triangle. He beat something. Sam Alvey too. Yeah, but who hasn't? I've never beat him once. Me either. But like so, of the guys that have fought him. True, true, true. Yeah, I'll, I'll take the I'll take the younger fighter here at home. 26 years old, Jimmy Crute. Like he's still supposed to be getting better. Fair, fair. And and again, you know? I do think it's going to be close. The only, like the main reason I'm going to go the other way is because I I was like dead ass fifty fifty. Not a bad underdog play at all no, in Alonzo no. Menafield. No. I don't want to bet. What this are the odds you, on that? What are the odds on that? Uh, last I checked, it was minus two ten for Jimmy Crute. I don't I don't have the plus numbers, but not a bad underdog at all. Dude, by the way, fifty three percent of people on Topology picking Menafield, which maybe, I did not maybe realize. Maybe those odds will flip. Who knows? Plus 190 for Menifield. I don't hate those odds. I don't think I would put it in a parlay piece, but no, I would bet no. that straight up. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's like, I, I don't hate it. I, I don't hate the pick. Can we move forward? Please, yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> Justin Taffa, Parker Porter, ya boy. Yeah. Ya boy. We're shaped the same. You and Parker Porter? Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's raw, though. He looks like... I like him more than I like you. That's fine. I wish he could do this. That's show. not that's not like high praise, like you know. <laughs> um, yeah, you want to go first on this one? That's fine. Uh, really quickly, I do have noted here that he's kind of shaped like in between me and you, and the facial hair too. Yeah, yeah. So that's pretty cool. He's just a bald fella, right? And he's got like kind of a goatee, kind of a beard. Yeah, yeah, that's good for him. He's dope. He's fatter than me for sure, though. Yeah, that's fine. I'll say that much. Poor guy. <laughs> You know, what are you calling people fat for, man? Can we just talk about the fight? I'm not fat shaming. I'm just saying, like, you're a professional athlete, dude. Come on. All right, here's here's what I want to do here. You ready? Yeah. There's like a little little game I want to play. All right. He has two losses in the UFC, Parker Porter. Yeah. Chris Dawkins and Jalton Almeida. Yeah. Let's throw the Jalton Almeida loss away because everyone's losing to Jalton yeah. Almeida. And I just want to say on that note, mm-hmm. shame on shame on you, Parker Porter, because right. he sold me on Chris Dawkins. Right. And that's where that's I think that's where my disdain from him, for him comes from. Okay, is like he sold me on Chris Dawkins as like because I think I, he said I, I don't, Chris, this Chris Dawkins guy. Yeah, yeah. We, had sit, we had that conversation. The had that. boxing is Chris. Right, we had that conversation yeah. after that fight. And granted, he fought some cans before that, but so can I can I do something here? Please. All right. So his two losses, Jalton Almeida, we're throwing it away because whatever. There's no shame in that, and everyone's losing him. Then he lost to Chris Dawkins, right? Everyone's making fun of Chris Dawkins, kind of like you just did right now. Yeah. And Chris Dawkins, it's, it's the new thing, right? Yeah. It's, it's the new, like, MMA joke. We make fun of Chris Dawkins. Oh, okay. All right. All right. You don't have to make it like a thing. It is. Okay. It really is. Let's look at uh, Dawkins' losses really quickly. Yeah. I don't want to do that. Derek Lewis, who I viol- know it doesn't look good last week, out. right? Oh, my God, though. It doesn't look good from last week. Yeah. See, but Derek Lewis, yeah. Curtis Blades, yeah. Jarzinho Rosenstrike. Let's compare that to Tafa's UFC losses. Jorgen De Castro no longer in the UFC. Carlos Felipe, boy, not boy. in the UFC. Oh, he's not? Reasons. Thank God. It was because of steroids. But steroids? Steroids. That dude. That dude. Imagine being shaped like that. You're on steroids. Anyways, not in the UFC. And his other loss, giving his only UFC career win, Jared Vandera, mm. who's the new Sam Elvey. That's your boy. Who should not be in the UFC at all, right? Yeah. Let's look at wins. Tafa beat Harry Hunsucker, no longer in the UFC. Terrible. Never had a UFC God win. God awful. God awful. Harry Hunsucker? Harry Hunsucker never had a UFC win. He's no longer in the UFC, and he lost to Jared Vandera as well. That's inexcusable. And then Juan, inexcusable, Jared Vandera. And then Juan Adams, who was 1-3 in the UFC before being cut. Oh, that's Let's nice. Let's compare that to Parker Porter's wins. Juan Adams is 1-3 in the UFC. 1-3. Yeah. 1-3. Let's compare that to Porter. Chase Sherman... Who has a couple of UFC wins? No, Josh he's Parisian, so fat. a couple of UFC wins. So fat. Two of his seven losses came pre UFC, or I mm. think four of them came pre UFC. But one of them was to Gabe Gonzaga, and one of them was to John Jones. Sure. Which is insane. Anyways, how did he make the weight, dude? I have no idea. But Justin Taffa can crack. You know, having said all that, Justin Taffa can crack. But it's not like you can't be touched by him and you're going to sleep. Yeah. He doesn't have like that kind of no, power. No, no, certainly not. He telegraphs everything he throws. 
I don't even really want to go too deep into it here. You I think have. Parker Porter is going to survive. And, and I think he wins. You think Parker Porter wins? I think Parker wins? Porter wins. I think he pieces him up 29-28. That's crazy. That's that's my underdog. He's more skilled, Dino. Oh, you're stressing me out, man. Look at the boxing. You're He's really so much the more The boxing? Skilled. He's so much more skilled. You're out of your He's mind. so much more skilled. You're out of your mind. The boxing? So much more skilled, dude. I think you're out of your mind. I think the only way that Porter wins is if he gets it to the ground. I think Tafa's done. If he gets to the ground, I think Tafa's Maybe done. That, and that's he's more skilled. He's gonna do something. He's better than him. He's a better fighter. <laughs> Justin Tafa's not. Dude, you're, he's five and three. You're How are you me. in the UFC at no, five you shouldn't, and three? Me, neither of like, these guys. I think. Okay, Dino. But Parker Porter's thirteen and seven. Listen, just listen to me. Yes. Give me a hand. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I think more than anything, yeah. this this goes to show you that the, the heavyweight, state of the heavyweight yeah. division of the UFC is a goddamn disaster. Nightmare. Nightmare. So. Justin Tuffa, not good. Parker Porter, fat and old and white. <laughs> like, it's not good. He he's, does have pretty good cardio for, like, a fat old white guy. He's athletic. <laughs> he's athletic. I would, I would stop short of that. But Dude. Tuffa's takedown defenses look pretty good. Porter is not good. I don't think he's, like, this god-tier no. wrestler that people have made him out to be at times. Like I said, I'm sorry he's old. Uh, Sorry to all the old and fat white guys. He's old and fat and white. You're like four years from that. Don't. That's bullshit. I'm in great shape. Yeah, but you might be fat in like four years, five years. Maybe, probably. Probably the way you eat. I don't. I don't think Tafa's <laughs> technical striking is, is anything special. I just think that he's just got a little bit more than Parker Porter, who's 37 years old, man. Like, and he's not an athlete. Justin Tafa's. I just want to say, if it's you're trash. like a big kid, okay, if you're like a big kid. And you're like, you're pretty athletic. I could never. Just try to fight. Just try fighting. Yeah. Because there are no athletes in this weight class, dude. No, you're right. There are no... How many athletes are in heavyweight? It's... Okay, it's John like Jones, obviously. Curtis Blades. Curtis Blades an athlete, sure. Yeah. Francis is pretty damn athletic, I guess. But, but he's not an athlete, really. Right. Cyril Gaon. Cyril Gaon is an athlete, yeah. sure. Hoops. And that's it. I think it, the, yeah. the buck stops and starts yeah. and ends there. Like, the rest of them are just like brutes. Just like fat, fat, strong guys, guys man. Like, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah I'm going to I'm gonna go Justin Taffa by TKO round one. Well, could we side bet this? Sure. Let's side bet it. Let's do it. Yeah. Uh, Jack Della Maddalena versus Randy Brown. As we're approaching here, uh, we're, we're in the third fight on the main card here. I think this is an absolute banger waiting to happen. I think both guys are raw. Randy Brown should be ranked, by the way. Can we agree on that? I think he needs to be in that, like, 15-14 range. He doesn't get enough love, man. He's really good. Yeah, like... He's got some good wins. His losses came against good guys. He's tall as hell, super long for 170, solid striker. He's on a four-fight winning streak. Mm -hmm. Beat Trinaldo off the top of my head. Like I can't remember who else, but some good wins. Um, and then I know we had an episode that didn't air. Yeah, We had like our first episode where we were trying it out. We were going to air it, and then there was like technical difficulties. And you mentioned Bonfim. Yep. Being my favorite 170 prospect. That's my favorite one. one. Bonfim. Yeah. Yeah, and, and he's raw, and it might, you know, deservedly so. I think Jack Della Maddalena is probably the best prospect at 170. I wouldn't, I wouldn't call him a prospect anymore. That's the thing, man. If, you're, mean, if your favorite three, minus 310 against Randy Brown, right? who you just said should be ranked, I don't think you're a prospect Right, but anymore. he's 26, and he's only on his fourth fight in the UFC. Don't do that. Okay, I'm sorry. Don't do that. Yeah, true. Anyways, um... He, he's good, man. Like, Jack Del Maddalena finishes people early. This is the fight that I'm least comfortable on here. Yeah. So I'm not even, like... Especially as... Big, I, he probably shouldn't be that big of a fan. No, I, yeah. I don't think he should be either. I'm not even factoring in X's and O's on this one. I guess we've gotten to that point of the card where, like, we're not doing that. Or I'm not doing that. I, I just think if Jack Del Maddalena is who he's supposed to be, if he's who we think he is... The he Bears! Or who we thought... <laughs> If he is who we think he is, and he's who the UFC wants him to be, and he's getting this big showcase opportunity, yeah. this is it, man. This is it. You this gotta beat Randy. Brown. This is it. You're right. You gotta knock Randy Brown out. Like Randy Brown has lost to Bilal Muhammad. Can you check his losses for me really quickly? Randy Brown. Yeah. Sure. Ch check his four losses to me. I know he had a decision loss to Bilal. 
But Bilal, man, that that is aged better right, than that's what any, I'm saying. Any, any and I think they've all aged well. He lost to Luke, Nico Price. Right, and that was Nico Price when it was Nico Price. And then Mike Graves. Right, whatever. I'll be honest with you, I don't even know who that is. That's fine. Yeah. But you see what I'm saying? Those losses have aged pretty oh, damn re- really well. Oh, really well. Where's Luke been at, man? Whatever. Where's he been at? I don't, let's talk. I don't want to talk about. It. He bothers me so much, Vicente Luque. You're a big Chaos Williams guy, though. I love Chaos Williams. I was I was at that fight, Randy Brown and Chaos Williams, and you didn't bring him any luck. None. Actually, he did win it. None. But by what? split decision. I mean, his losses are to good guys. I just think if Jack Della Maddalena is who we think he is, he needs to get that knockout in Perth. He's from Perth, I believe. Yep. He's on a pay per view card with two titles on it in a feature spot. Like yep. that's high praise, man. That that means they think this kid's gonna be a star. With a nose like that, you better be good at fighting because your looks ain't gonna make you yeah, a his, star. His nose said <laughs> something like that. Yeah, I, I, I'm gonna go with a first round knockout. I know it's crazy, but that's what he does. Yeah, man. Uh, I think you've pretty much said it all. Uh, I think it's a big step up in competition for uh, Dilla Madalena. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he's got the right tools, man. I think. Brown is really big for the division. Yeah. I think he knows how to use his size. He's got good movement. What I don't like about Randy Brown is that when he does get hit, yeah. he really does not like it. Yeah. He really doesn't like it. I mean, it's just being so skinny, I feel like. I feel like but he's shredded, like, though. He's not yeah. just skinny. Like, right, he's, but he's like 6'9". <laughs> no, okay. he's not 6'9". Well, you know, but, but yeah. I could see Madalena maybe trying some leg kicks in this. I don't know, man. I, I don't. I, I don't. I think you've basically said it all. Yeah. I think Jack Dilla Madalena has some of the best boxing in the division. I'm gonna go TKO, not round one, but I'll do round two. Round two, and that's fair because Randy Brown's a tough guy. He should be able to survive some a little bit of an onslaught. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, moving on to the co-main event, I'm really, really, really excited about this one. I think there's a lot of people that are tripping about this one. Same. It's Yair Rodriguez versus Josh Emmett. I hope we agree. Cause if, Man, I mean, listen, I know. think that people are... I'm going to go first, so that's okay yeah, with you. Yeah, yeah. I think that people have forgotten what Yair Rodriguez did with Max Holloway. Yep. He, he shattered his foot. Like, both of them shattered their feet, basically yeah. kicking each other's faces off. Dude, what a battle that was. Um, I don't know where, like, I don't think he's getting hate, but I feel like people have, have like, stopped respecting Yair yeah, Rodriguez. Literally, they must have forgot. Yeah. Like, for real. And I know, like, his last fight was with the Ortega fight, and I know Ortega's shoulder popped out of place, but that was at the end of the first round. And before that, dude, Yair Rodriguez was kind of messing him up. Yeah. Yair Rodriguez was fucking Brian Ortega up. Dude, Josh Emmett is good. He's old for the division. I think I've seen what he can do. Yeah. He's short. Yaya Rodriguez loves... He, bro, he's got the Taekwondo style. He's got the kicks. I don't see... I'm very comfortable with this. Same. It may go to decision. I just don't see it, man. I'm going to call a late round finish on this. Either third or fourth round. TKO by Yaya Rodriguez. Brian Ortega is not necessarily like a world-class striker. But Brian Ortega is damn good, man. Brian Ortega is... The- Unreal. And I love him, by the way. He's Same. one. He, he's one of my boys. Same. Yeah. Like I mean, our yeah. boy. He's got. Re- boy. He's got. Re- thank you. He's got really good timing. Can we make our our boy T-shirts. Yes, yeah. we should. Let's do it. Let's talk about that later. Emmett is. I think Emmett's very predictable. Yeah. He throws the, the, the like the overhand left, the overhand right. You know, I don't think he's anything special, man. I think he actually, uh, to me, uh, in my opinion, he lost the Ege fight. I actually thought he lost his last two fights. Which he did. He did. Let's, let me let, which was Danny uh, Gay and Calvin Cater. Thank you. I thought he lost both of those fights. Yeah. And I just want to say, I think Calvin Cater, when he fought Holloway. Yeah. yeah. And I, I know Sweet. MMA math and this don't Never necessarily was. be mathing, right? Yeah. But that's a big difference, man. Yeah. Calvin Cater absolutely got. Did not belong with Max did Holloway. Did not belong with, with Max Holloway. Yeah. It was like me piecing you up or something like that. Like, <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, I just think it's eons difference, man. It was, yeah. I, I don't see a different situation than Yair Rodriguez winning by finish. He's not going to choke him out. Right. It's probably going to be a TKO. Josh Emmett's a tough son of a bitch. I just think he's bigger. He throws kicks. Emmett's pretty predictable. Uh, I'm, give me Yair by finishing the third or fourth round. Yeah, I, I agree with every single thing you said. 
especially the fact that I, d- I don't know if you said it this way, but I don't think Josh Emmett deserves to be here. I don't think he does and, either, and man, at no, all. And that's no knock on Josh I, Emmett. No, I think it's just like they needed somebody to fill this role. Right, and Josh Emmett is 18-2. and two. Is he really? And I at, thought he had more losses. And at him. worst, if you give him those two losses, he's 16-4 and four with a loss against, you know, Orte or yeah. whatever. I lost my train of thought. Kelvin Cater I was, I was and Danny. I was scared. Kelvin <laughs> uh, Cater and Dan Ige. So it's like, whatever. He's got a really good record. He's old, man. I think he's 37 years old. Uh, for the for a smaller weight class. Yeah, and Yair's peaking at 30. Like like you said, that Yair, Max, Holl- Max Holloway fight was crazy. Crazy, was dude. Stupid what a close. crazy fight that was. And it was stupid close. My goodness. And his foot was a balloon. I think. Hey, what? No, it was. Yeah. It was. <laughs> and, hey, it was. And it was just like that yeah, fight you was t- unreal. You text. <laughs> you just reminded you text me that during that, that night, fight. Yeah, that's wild. His foot's like, a balloon. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. I think Yair just like starches him with something crazy, like a flying knee or something like that. He's just got like such a bigger like, arsenal of strikes. All Josh Emmett has else. is like an overhand. Right, and, and again, that power. Is good, and he had that Michael Johnson knockout, which is disgusting. But then again, Calvin Cater was getting touched up by him, and he wasn't going out. It's not like he has that like nuclear power. Nah. Like he, it's he's got good, good power. Man. It's good, yeah. right? But but Yair's got a hell of a chin. Oh, a great chin, dude. Like, so what are we talking about here? Right. You know, like the ability to finish at any point, which we saw in the zombie fight from uh, yes. Yair. Like he's he's too versatile. It's his time. That was he's, crazy. That elbow. He de- the yeah, it was disgusting. That was nuts. He's thirty years old. It's his time. I'm super duper excited to see Yair versus Volkanovski when we do get that matchup at some point later this year. That's gonna be fire. Uh, Josh Emmett can't keep getting this lucky, right? No. He can't just like luck into a I title shot at thirty eight. Realistically, I think this is it for him. Yeah, it's you know, I think be. this is the UFC needed somebody in this spot, and it should have been Calvin Cater. And it should have been Calvin Cater. Yeah, it should have been Calvin and. Cater. I think more than anything, this goes to show you how goddamn good Volkanovski is. Because look what he did to Max Holloway. Yeah. And whatever you thought about their first fight. Yeah. I wanted to talk about this, Dino. Like the MMA math that don't be math in that you were talking about. So Volkanovski beat the crap out of Max Holloway. Max Holloway beat the crap out of of Calvin Cater. Yep. Calvin Cater beat Beat the hell out of Giga Chikadze. Yep. Like massacred him. Yeah. And then it's just like then Brian Ortega gets massacred by all these guys. Yeah. And I know that's our boy, but it's just but like, he went to a war with but, Volkanovski. But then he'll beat yeah. some of the other guys, and it's like it, it doesn't make sense. Nah, it doesn't. Especially make sense. at featherweight, it makes no sense. That's why there. styles styles are. That's what makes matchups. Styles make fights. That's what they say, right? But anyway, like I said, man, I think more than anything, it goes to show you how good yeah. Alexander the Great is. Are you done? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, oh, why would I not be? No, I was just I was Drink messing with you. Water. Yeah, I was messing with you. Um, the main event, Makachev versus Volkanovski. Yeah. I really, really hate this fight, personally. I <laughs> really, really hate it. I think Islam, Makachev, like all these guys from the Caucasus region are weight bullies. God forbid you fight somebody your own size. No. So you know? Why would we? Uh, Alex the Great, I know he used to be 215 pounds. I know he used to be a rugby fight, uh, player, player, Jesus Christ, rugby not a fighter. fighter. Uh, he used to be a rugby player. Um, I don't think any of that matters. That's that, that's years ago. Yeah. And that's not who he is now. I don't think he's like... He's not particularly big for featherweight. Like No. So, he's a short dude. If it was Kamar he, Usman coming down yeah. to fight is Makachev, it? Yeah. I would feel better about it. Yeah. Even though I think Alex the Great is the better overall fighter. If, sure. And I think that makes sense too. Sure, yeah. I just think that the it's size difference is going to be too much. Ah, I really hate it, man. I really want to see Alex the Great win. I don't see it going to. I don't. I by no means see this going five rounds. Unfortunately, I'm going to say Makachev by sub, probably in the third or fourth, probably the third round. Realistically, no. I really hate it. I really hate it. I hope Alexander the Great gets it done. I just don't see it, man. I think Makachev is. Dude, he might be too big for one seventy, like, or he's I mean, just barely big enough for one set. Like, yeah, I don't like it, man. I just he, he's hate not it. undersized at one seventy. He's tell you certainly that. not. Yeah, like there's guys like Gilbert Burns that are smaller than him, 
Jorge Masvidal is smaller than him. On on fight on fight night at one forty five or if one fifty five yeah. are smaller than him. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, I mean, really quickly, I just want to talk a little bit about Alexander Volkanovsky here. Number one pound for pound fighter, as we mentioned, right? He's incredible. He, you mentioned a couple weeks ago, he's the most dominant current champion that we do have. Thank you for saying that. Yes. Oh my God, yeah, you took down some notes about and, what and I, I said. And I remember. I remember. That's so nice. Anyways, he's he's nearing featherweight goat status if he's not already there at this point. He's there, man. Yeah, the in, size, my, in my opinion, the size is the big concern here, as you've been <laughs> mentioning. Like Islam's huge for fifty five, but Volk's a little tank. People say that Volkanovski hasn't been finishing people as of late, which he hasn't. But he's made some of these people look like they. But he's looking like fight. amateurs, dude. Yeah, yeah. Like Max Holloway is a. How about this? They would have been better off some of these guys if he finished them. Right. Yeah. Like Max Holloway got picked apart in that third fight, oh in that my trilogy. God. People like to say the Brian Ortega fight was close. It wasn't. He got absolutely mauled. He had a minute and a half of success. One yeah. minute and a half yeah, of uh, 25. You know I love Brian Ortega. I, and it's still weird to me that people like make it seem like... It was a war. Even though he kind of almost got him. Like, it's, yeah. like, it's not, it was, it was, not, it was not a war, man. Yeah. And then he made the Korean zombie, who's a future Hall of Famer, look like he doesn't know what fighting is. I love the Korean zombie. But yeah, man. You're right. Yeah. Made, made him look like he doesn't know how to fight. Then you have Makachev, obviously, making his first title defense here of the 155 strap against the 45 champion. No love for my boy Benil, by the way. I got to mention that. It should be him fighting. Um, he's obviously been on fire, right? Islam's been finishing everybody. I heard Chael Sonnen break down something pretty cool, and he was talking about how Alexander Volkanovsky is the pound-for-pound number one fighter in the world right now, and he's a three-to-one dog against Islam. It, well, I mean, and, man, I and, get it. And on top of it, Dino, he was like, Islam Makachev is the same guy that the majority of the MMA fan base five months ago was saying... Shouldn't be fighting for a title. Doesn't belong here against Charles Oliveira. Well, I agree, but I, I, I don't think I don't think it was race. because of his skill set. I think it was just because just based on merit. What did he show? Right, yeah. sure. Who did he fight? And that's fair, bro. By but, the way, minus three eighty, man. So I'm like a lot. I don't feel like that's too much. Maybe not, right? Probably not. But anyways, it is what it is. Islam Makachev is is, is huge, right? I just want to break it down really quickly, though. The striking edge goes to Volk. It's smaller than people think it is. I agree. But the striking edge does go to Volk, right? It's, it no, is there. Que- it's no question. Right. The but gra- I think the size difference in the striking yeah, yeah. negates a lot and of that's that. why I'm saying it's closer than, than people think yeah. it is. As far as the grappling and the ground game is concerned, it's not close. It's Islam Makachev by a, a mile. Yeah. Right? He's going to take him down. Can Volk get up? We saw Charles Oliveira get up, but that was Charles Oliveira. <laughs> and he was only able to get up. I mean, he was able to get up when he did get taken Barely. down. I think twice. Yeah. He did a good job, but that's Oliveira. We'll see if Volk can do that. If Volk is able to stuff a few takedowns and, you know, stand up when he does eventually get taken down, because he will, maybe he can take it to a decision. I think I think Volk has great cardio, man. I think as it gets later, though, mm-hmm. like, you can fight off Islam Makachev taking you down for a, a round or two. Yeah. I don't think you can do it for five. Dude. No, I, I don't think there's I a person agree. on the planet that can do it for five. I agree with you. I think Islam does get an RNC in the third round, which is what I do. Oh, I thought you said TKO before. No, I have it as an RNC. Okay. But... But here's what I'm trying to say. Alexander Volkanovsky does have a little more than a puncher's chance here. Like, I, it, it's I not, absolutely agree yeah, with It's you. not like out it's of not the question. It's not random, yeah. It's not out of the question and just like, oh, he might luckily catch him, which is an option to win in, you know, in this fight. Makachev stays at distance, though, he, man. He does. He, I mean, we saw him get chinned once, and he's a very smart fighter, Islam Makachev. And, he's gotten, and his striking has gotten better. It's gotten better, right? Very, very kick-oriented when he's striking. He's a smart, smart fighter, man. That's what he doesn't get as much credit for as he should. Yeah. Like everyone thinks, like Islam Makachev, smash, take you down, wrestle. No, he's a, submission, he, but he's he's very cerebral, right? God forbid he fights somebody his own size, though. I'm telling you. Sure, and, and that's fair. I, I do want to say this though: if Alexander Volkanovsky somehow does pull off the victory here, I'll be so happy. If that were to happen, do you know he instantly moves into like goat status goat of status. MMA, right? One hundred percent agree. He's Mount dude. Rushmore. Oh man, absolutely. Like, and, 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 and the rest of his credentials are, are already they're there. there yeah. They're like, there, yeah. They're there. But if he can beat Islam Makachev, he moves into that Mount Rushmore position, and I don't think anyone can argue that. And I do love the confidence that he has going into this fight. He's sitting there he talking He looks about, really... Uh, he's training his ass have off. Have you heard what he's been and saying? And I love that he knows that... Like, he knows... Like, first of all, who are we to 
We're not going to tell Alexander Volkanovsky no. anything that he doesn't no. know. Yeah. I just love that. You, I love to see that he's doing the things that we want him to do. Right. right. Now. Yeah. And he's sitting there and he's like, I want you guys to remember what you're saying. Like, I'm going to make everyone eat their words. I hope he does. And he's like, remember what you said? And, and I loved this. He goes, remember who you thought he was. Like, remember who you said he was. Who? Uh, about Islam Makachev. Yeah. Because when I beat him, he's like, don't t- don't don't diminish what he was. Say he never fought yeah, anyone. Yeah, he fought Charles. Oh, I love like that. This and that. I love and he's that. Like, just remember. I really said love that. that. And I was like, man, like his his mind's in the right place. Unfortunately, it's probably not enough. It's not gonna happen. Yeah. But I'm just saying, if he does it, then Alexander Volkanovsky is the 145 goat by far, which he already is. Yeah. And he's Mount Rushmore status legend of the MMA game. If he could do this. Fully agree, man. You got me so hyped for that. It's, you got me really hyped for that. That's what this right fight now. is, right? Like, that's what is, this podcast is, mm. dude. You got me. <laughs> like, Islam's supposed to win. We know He's, that. I know, yeah. And I, I hope he does. But, like, you know, you're saying that Alexander Volkanovsky, the guy who's been beating the shit out of everybody, is going to lose, and you're certain of it? I am certain of it, That's man. what I'm saying. And he's trying to make you eat those words. I like, ho- and I hope he does. And But it's same. because, like I said, man, this guy's a weight bully. Yeah, I, you're right. I mean, I have Islam by RNC round three. He's 185 pounds, 190 pounds. I'm on just fight excited night, to sit back and see what the hell happens here. Me too. Because if it's not Volkanovski, which it's probably not, who's who's it going to be? It's going to be nobody, and he's going to sit there until he retires like an asshole. Mm-hmm. So let's find out. You know, let's find out. Perth, Australia. Let's get it, man. Let's and that's it. that's. I got nothing else to say. I think you've really did such a great job no. recapping that last fight. Uh, man, I'm excited. I know you're excited. Take us out, though. Let them know. Thank you guys for watching. I know this episode was pretty damn long. I think it's longer than we've uh, been for on. For a pay-per-view. Hey, it's a pay-per-view. With pound for pound status on right. the line. Fair, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like and subscribe here. Please follow us on Instagram, the 10 number 7 mma We would really appreciate that. You got anything else to say, Dino? No, nah, man. You did a great job. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Peace.